Uh, well, um, the uh, governor uh, included a new offer today. Um, it was very disappointing and a step backwards. Um, again, we're back at income taxes. Um, we now have, as another offer, uh, increase by a dollar a pack on cigarettes. Uh, we've made it very clear that we did not believe we need a tax increase to balance our budget. Probably the most disappointing part of it was that there was no details on where the money would be spent. What we have maintained all along, whether it be January 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, when we started putting together budget targets, when the budget forecast came out in February, when we got to the new part where we were ready for negotiations during conference committees, it has always been about the spending. Adding additional tax increases at this point is pretty clear to us that things went backwards today. It's very disappointing. Five days in, the only solution we got from the governor was another tax increase followed by a second tax increase. The, sales ta the cigarette tax increase is probably one of the more regressive sales taxes. Um, again, uh, something that we don't agree with. Uh, but again, the most disappointing part is that we do still do not know where the governor would make budget reductions and where the governor would make those prioritized spending. Um, we'll let him comment on the details of his offer, but uh, again, a step backwards from our perspective, going back to income taxes once again, when we've made it very clear that uh, we don't believe that we need an income tax, when we've produced a budget that is the largest in the state's history, funds our priorities, details where the spending reductions would be, where the spending increases would be, and then also at that point uh, send it to the governor with 68 votes and 34 votes out of the legislative bodies. We passed that budget, he vetoed it. We cannot call ourselves back into session. We cannot, uh, no matter how much Amy and I wish, pass these bills, pass lights on. That's the governor's prerogative under our constitution. Uh, we would again ask to call us back get the temporary lights on, the temporary funding bill in place so that we don't have to go through this and then get serious about making offers that we actually will be able to pass for the House of Representatives. In this scenario, again, Republicans give up what we campaigned on, reducing spending, reducing the size of government, and raising taxes. I ask you, I ask the public, if that's what we campaigned on, if that's what we were elected on, how do our members go back home and say we gave up on all of our principles to the governor? It's not about wins and losses. It's about keeping your word to the people who elected you. And to say you give up on all the things you were elected on because this is what I want isn't compromise. Is that a cigarette tax a replacement at one point for the income tax, or were they on the same table at the same time? I just it's want to a, clarify. It's, a, it's a, a couple different options from the governor. So it's one or the other is his offer. So either the cigarette tax or the income tax. Correct. Correct. All cuts did the governor move on cuts and give you any more? No, uh, that was probably the more disappointing is that it seems that it's just a, it's just a number to get revenue. Uh, and still no outline, and, and the number remains about $1.4 billion. So there's been no, no detail on that, no additional um, reforms or uh, reductions offered. And so that, uh, that's, I think, probably the most disappointing thing. I mean, besides, you know, kind of going back to the fourth tier or, or taking a cigarette tax, I think it's that idea that there still was you know, appreciate that he's making an offer, but there's just still no detail, uh, and it just seems to be trying to get to a number, which is, you know, well north, uh, almost one and a half billion dollars more in uh, revenue. Is the cigarette tax a non-starter with your caucus? I would say a tax increase in general is a non-starter with our caucus. We have maintained that the budget we produced with the revenues generated by the taxpayers. Uh, again, each time these taxes are tried, the revenue does not show up. Uh, the Wall Street Journal had a, a, an opinion recently about uh, Maryland, Oregon, New York, New Jersey. You can look at these numbers when they think that they're going to get a billion, a billion two, a billion five, and 900 million, 800 million actually shows up. You're creating yet another problem. And after that, then who's next? And we've heard from a lot of Minnesotans that know who's next. It's them. It's either their sales tax or it's an income tax on all brackets. Rather than setting ourselves up with that kind of spending and that kind of next millennium or out your debt or deficits, we don't think is responsible. We manage our budget now, 
we're going to be able to set ourselves up to lead the recovery instead of waiting for it to come to Minnesota or dealing with yet another budget deficit in the next budget biennium. So where do you go from here? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously we'll take back uh, the offer. We'll, you know, go over the numbers again, see if there's, you know, something in there. But, but I think the key is, and this morning uh, we had another meeting uh, with the Health and Human Services folks, and uh, I think that meeting would be characterized as very productive. They are really uh, making some headway into that bill, which is, as we've said all along, uh, this budget is not about, I mean, the disagreement that we're having is not about K-12 spending. It's not about spending for roads. It's not about spending for courts or law enforcement. The discussions surround the Health and Human Services budget, which is growing unsustainably and in a way that Minnesotans can't afford. And so that, that's good. So that's, that's the progress today, is that that area uh, continued, to, continued their discussions. And, and, and again, uh, Senator Han reported to me that uh, the meetings were, were good. Um, but that's because they're focused on all areas. They're not, they're not just talking about a number that they have to hit in revenue. They're discussing reforms. They're discussing real reductions. Uh, and they're discussing you know, the reforms that will control the spending in the out years. That's the conversation we have to have, not just who's going to get taxed and how much. So what, where are you going here? Are you done meeting for the time being? It's the K-12 that? meeting uh, tomorrow morning. That's still been scheduled. Uh, that, as you all know, that number is, um, we've, we've met the governor 100% there, uh, so I assume that discussion will largely um, surround reforms. Uh, we will, you know, we'll bring back the governor's proposal and, and check it out and bring it back to the workshop, as we call it. Um, uh, but we would just encourage again for the governor, we're here, we're ready to work. Uh, we can pass those six bills in temporary funding and keep working. Uh, we could pass just a simple lights on bill and keep working. We're, we're very open to, you know, several options there. And I, I have not seen you to come out looking as despondent as you were when you came out today. If you campaigned, as you said, on the things that you campaigned on, the governor campaigned largely on tax those top 2%. I don't understand or see how it can go. How in the world can anybody make this work? Well, I think you saw, Lee, um, last week, uh, some real effort uh, on our behalf to come up with some additional revenue uh, that weren't tax increases uh, that we could work with the governor on. Uh, the number of 1 .5, almost $1.5 billion, um, you know, that's just that's just spending that we don't know where it's going and it's, and it's far too much. Um, but if we, can, if we can work from an area of what are the reductions? What are the reforms? Where's the money going? Uh, then I think that's a, that's a clearer path and a more responsible path to solving this budget. So I think that's where the pathway is. So, so that's why I'm, I'm, I guess I'm heartened by the, uh, the talks that happened in Health and Human Services. Uh, not so excited about this proposal. You think you're taking it. Is it on, feel like any, any movement on that from the governor as far as you see it? Yeah, we'd, you'd have to check with him. But we are, as always, we stand ready to gather our people. We could have them here tomorrow morning and passing a lights on bill. And your last request, how did he respond when you asked for that last? Well, we'll let him. I don't, we don't like to characterize his response. Would you consider taking care of the HHS bill first and then moving on to the other bills? Is that an option? We've tried, uh, <laughs> we've tried six ways from Sunday. Right. Uh, you know, the easy ones, the tough ones. I mean, we've a total target, uh, partial targets. We have maintained that we should, first and foremost, get the temporary funding in place. So that the, the number of things, you know, going back to the courts once a week to ask for, now this be included, now that be included, uh, is, I mean, it, good for lawyers, I guess, but bad for the people who, you know, actually expected that their programs would continue because they are, uh, you know, critical or life critical, whatever the, the saying is. But we've tried and asked several different ways on parts of budgets or bar budgets that we've essentially agreed to. Um, the governor has said very clearly over and over that he wants a total budget before he tries a partial budget. Um, I'm very pragmatic, and if that hasn't worked for us, then why don't we try something different? Why not try, if, if the HHS bill is the biggest, toughest one to deal with, get that nailed down and then try the rest of them? We're willing to do that, absolutely. But we also think that the governor should call us back first, get the lights back on, yes. temporary funding, so that this, the, you know, the going back and forth to the courts and the special master doesn't have to continue for the voters of the state. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I, if it, uh, we'd like to get road construction going, Tim. We have an incredibly short construction season here in the state of Minnesota. And so uh, to hold all of that up 
you know, to complete these discussions on health and human services doesn't make a lot of sense. The, the order, if we could get a temporary funding bill and get, move, get those things moving and then, start, then go back to HHS and make sure that that's complete before we agree to these other bills, I'm okay with that. But the point is we need to get, we need to get the government up and running again. And, and the only person that can do that is the governor by calling us back and getting some sort of temporary funding or, or starting with these bills. But we're not picky about the order of that. You said you're going to take those numbers back, look over them. Have you explicitly rejected this offer yet, or is that sort of still up in the air? That, well, as the, far as the cigarette tax versus an income tax, whatever, I think it's either, either or. We, I think we've been pretty clear that a, a tax increase of any kind is off the table. Some of the other things that are included in the governor's offer, we're absolutely interested. We're going to take it back to the tax committee members, take it back to uh, you know, HHS, you know, whoever's involved in the, in the different issue areas. But um, if it includes a tax increase as the number one, you know, the kind of the cornerstone of the offer, um, we've been very clear that we're, we can't vote for tax increases. So there's more than just the cigarette tax and the income tax? Yes, they wouldn't. They wouldn't the, the dollar amount you're looking at is about $1.4 from the governor that he's looking mm -hmm. for in revenue. And so those don't, his proposals don't come to that. So there's additional. There's a variety. There's a variety. Mm -hmm. and, in 2005, the health fee was considered to be the keystone of the deal, yes. but this year you don't see that has it. The, which was the cigarette? Well, it was called the health, health fee. fee. Yeah. Yeah. I think both Democrats and Republicans have spoiled that for everyone. Are you guys looking for additional revenue options, except for taxes? Obviously, you've said that that's not on the table right now, as far as you're concerned. But are there other things that might be appealing to your caucuses, or might you know? Again, um, we've made what we thought was a pretty generous, good faith effort. That was rejected. Um, we also need to know, whatever those other options would be, what the governor would sign. If it's a Racino, if it's a Block E, if it's, you know, some, if it's that kind of revenue, we need to know if the governor will sign them uh, before we go to our caucuses and ask them, because we have very divided caucuses. And with a whole bunch of brand new people, we've got folks that want to uh, repeal the lottery and all gambling in the state, period. And then we've got folks on every one of the gaming bills that say, open it up, uh, you know, Racino, Block E, Slots and Bars, you name it. So we've got a wide variety, <laughs> to say the least, of, of, uh, of where our folks are in all these bills. But if it's not something that's going to get the governor's signature at this point, six days into government shutdown or six, five and a half days into government shutdown, we are not going to waste the people's time or a member's time with something that's not going to get signed. Are you pursuing the gambling issue within your caucus, talking to people about it, seeing where the votes are? No, I'm not. Is it becoming more appealing, that gambling part of it? I, you know, again, if it's something that's going to get the governor's signature and get 68 votes, we can talk about it. But if it's not, I don't think it's in... It's any, anyone's good use of time to, to consider things that aren't going to get signed. Are you looking for something that has all votes from everybody in the caucus? Uh, for whatever the proposal is, does it have to have unanimous support from Republicans in both caucuses? Well, I, I, I mean, my just general work, working rule with where we've been this session is the Democrat leadership in both the House and the Senate are not going to be helpful. In fact, they're going to be counterproductive. So we're expecting to do to pass these bills, to pass a final budget solution, as we have with the regular session, with just Republican votes. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're cheerleading for a shutdown, but I don't think they've been productive. They haven't offered any solutions. They didn't offer bills. They didn't offer, in some cases, they didn't even offer portions of the governor's budget until after the House deadline. So I would uh, fully expect that we're going to have to pass this with 68 Republican votes in the House and 34 in the Senate uh, on, our, on our very own in agreement with the governor. Um, I, you know, I don't see Senator Bach and Representative Thiessen in any of their public comments being positive or helpful or constructive. How different would this be if, if you're doing these talks in the open and we, you just came out here and did the talks? Would they be any different than they are behind closed doors? No, this is, uh, this is pretty much what we talk about. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question, but uh, no, this is, I mean, we talk to the governor, we talk about lights on, we talk about the spending, we, we you know, we reviewed his offer, we asked a few questions uh, because it's not, it's, it's, it's something, uh, there's some difference in there, although the, the income tax is largely the same, but there's some, there's some different things in there. Um, and so this is, uh, but we'll let him share those details. Are you feeling more pressure from your members as time goes on to cut a deal? And are you hearing from them that they're getting more pressure from their constituents to get it done? Um, actually, it's, um, it's, it's uh, kind of, the, it's quite the opposite, I would say, though. Uh, what I'm hearing from my members is 
Uh, they don't want this. They want to get a bill done. They would, they would uh, very much like to come in and put a lights on bill in place and continue the negotiations. They know that uh, most of these members have worked on the bills and they know that there are six of them that could be, you know, finished up and done by, you know, tomorrow by Friday at the latest. Um, and so there's, there's frustration there and there's concern, just as all of us have. Um, I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that the chair um, is Mike Beard and uh, Joe Gimsey have been pushing hard. Uh, they're very concerned about the transportation funding and wanting to get that going. So they share people's concerns. They share people's frustration. Uh, they, they absolutely want to get this resolved. But they also understand the fundamental spending issue. And they are hearing that over and over from the folks that you know, we're concerned about whether it's spending in Washington, spending in St. Paul. We've got to get that under control. Is this looking like a longer term shutdown than you might have first thought based on what happened today? We, we could come in tomorrow and do a, a do a lights on bill and we'd be happy to do that and so I kind of remain hopeful that we can do that. I also remain hopeful uh, from what I saw from the health and human services discussion so uh, I'll just keep I'll just I'll just remain optimistic on that. It, well, could, it could get done tomorrow. If there was another revenue option proposed that could pass your caucus I mean would you guys be open to that? I mean if there was one that had support, I mean, or is it, have you limited to the $34.2 billion spending target? If something came up, a revenue option. Again, it's a, an if and a but and a maybe. Um, until we see it on paper um, offered, you know, with a, uh, a, an amount and then where the spending goes, it's awfully hard for us to comment. The only thing was that we've received from revenue, and it's a tax increase. Let's be very, very clear about this. These are tax increases, whether it's on you know regressive taxes on cigarettes, uh, whether it's taxes on small business men, men and women, they are still tax increases. So, for us to say what if if you did this, what if that, I, I don't know because the only thing we've been offered are tax increases, and no no direction for the spending. I think that's the key here. Have you guys asked and him? No to, have you asked him to lay out? You know more points about that, and he just says no. We handed out the homework. I mean, we, we gave all of you the the worksheets on the spending cuts. You know, what side of the ledger? It's easy to work on one side. Just go ask somebody else for some money. The other side of the ledger, which we filled out, is where will you make your budget reductions or prioritized? Say, well, we want to see your cuts. Does he have a response to that? It's a question to ask him. It's, it sounds like it's less likely than gambling. Yeah, it's re it, they're all regressive. So. Thank you, guys. Thank you.